Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Ori here. So the face used to be something I really struggled with getting right. I've obviously gotten a lot better at it now, but here's some old art to give you an idea of how it was like back then. And I was in this sort of beginner's hell where I knew I was doing something wrong but didn't know how to fix it. Although I did slowly get better over time by just putting the reps in, I still always felt like it was my biggest weakness and it wasn't until I reached a point where I was so frustrated with my lack of skill that I finally said screw it and I went off into the mountains to train, determined to overcome my weakness. You can actually see that I posted this in June of 2022 and then I didn't post anything for two months as during that time I spent every day trying to work on my specific weak points and did tons of practice drawing the face and the figure. And two months later, you can see here that the next piece I made after doing all that practice was received a lot better on Twitter and was the first time I got over 20,000 likes on a single piece. And to be honest, it was only after this point in my art journey that I started to feel that my art was actually pretty good or at least consistently high in quality anyway. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you the three best tips I learned during that two months training arc for drawing the face, which finally got me out of beginner's hell. None of these tips are hard to do, they just take time, so I'll also be rating each tip based on the time investment needed. And since I like to see improving as leveling up, I'll also rate them based on how many EXP points I felt they gave me relative to the time invested. Let's get started! The first tip is the box method, where you think of the head as a box. And instead of explaining how it does that, I'm just going to show you by critiquing my old work and applying it to fix it. So this piece might look okay at first glance, and you might be wondering, what's wrong with it? But the face in this piece is actually an optical illusion of sorts. Because the moment we think of the head as a box, we can see that although the front of the face is in a flat front view, or even just looking up a little, we can see the top of the head, which isn't possible. So just to make this point clear, I have here a box with different color sides in 3D. Now imagine that this box is the face, and that the green plane is the front of the face. And if we're looking at it straight from the front, it would look like this. And you can see that we can't see any other planes including the top of the box. However, in this piece, the top of the head is visible, which means the box should look like this. And so the front of the face should be foreshortened. And so applying that, the front of the face should look like this as a box, which means that the face is foreshortened going down and the ears should be raised up since the side plane of the face goes like this as a box. And the shape of the eyelids also change since we're looking at it from above. And so applying those changes, the face should actually look more like this. So before, after, before, after. So as you can see, by thinking of the head as a box, we can avoid major errors such as drawing illusions, just like I showed you. And it also helps with placing the facial features correctly. There are two ways to use this box method. The first is just drawn on top of however you normally draw your head to troubleshoot errors, just like I showed you here. The second is to start by drawing a box before you draw the head, so you can use it as a guide to draw on top of. The most important lines on the box are the center and the side lines. The center line of course tells you where the middle of the head is, and that helps you place the left and the right facial elements correctly, as well as align the nose and the mouth. The second important line are the side lines, and by side line I mean the side of the box like here, and so this part. This line tells you where the front of the head stops and the side of the head starts. It's actually around the edge of the eyes here, and it's particularly helpful for drawing the side hair as it falls right around this line, and also getting the face width correct. Since if you think of the front plane like a 3D box, you will remember to foreshorten it in perspective, meaning that the front of the head is the widest when facing the front, and as the head turns, you will see less of the front of the head and more of the side of the head. And in this example, you can think of the front of the face as the A and the side of the face as the B. So as the box turns, the B side gets more and more visible and the A side less and less. So the area of the face elements kind of shrink, so they squish together more. The box method also helps you place the ears correctly, as you can think of the ear line as a line that goes from the side of the eyes here across the side of the head. Think of it like glasses. And this side line also applies from above or below in perspective like here, and also here. So you'll realize that when the face is tilted up, the ears actually go down relative to the level of the eyes, and when the face is tilted down, the ears go up relative to the level of the eyes. Some points to watch out for when using the box method. One, remember it's just a perspective guide. The face is obviously not flat, and things like the nose and the mouth will protrude beyond the box 
and that gets affected by perspective too. So you still need to draw in the structure of the face, but using the box method will help you draw that structure in more accurately by forcing you to think three-dimensionally and giving you 3D guidelines to work with. I rate this tip a one out of three for time investment since it's something you can practice and apply immediately. For the XP points, I give it a whopping two stars, which is amazing for the time investment because this tip has saved me from making so many drawing mistakes and I still use it to this day. And if you want to go plus alpha and supercharge this tip to really level up your accuracy for the face, I recommend doing the practice exercise I did here, where you start by drawing a box and then rotating it, and then you translate that into the box of the head, which you then use to draw the head structure accurately in perspective. Then you can repeat it for higher and lower camera angles. The second tip is to draw head turnarounds. This was the practice method I used to help me learn how the face is actually structured. Since doing it, I stopped having major issues with getting the positions of the facial features right, such as the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, eyebrows, etc. Which was a big problem for me before. This is because drawing turnarounds solidifies the 3D form of the head in your mind. You get a clear idea of what it should look like from different angles and the nuances of each angle. Doing this study beforehand will also give you your own personal reference that you can refer back to if you get stuck or forget how an angle looks like in the future. The four steps to do this are 1. Find photos or a 3D model of a head and slowly turn it around. For this study, I use Anatomy 360's head models. This isn't sponsored by the way, I just find this stuff incredibly useful for doing studies. As usual, there will be a link in the description to it and anything else I mention in this video if you want to check it out. Once you've got your reference, the next step is to analyze it. What you want to study are the different planes of the face. Like what is the structure around the eyes, the cheeks, forehead, etc. If this is too difficult to start with, I recommend isolating each facial element one by one and studying their form from different angles separately first. For example, just starting with only the eye structure and analyzing that. The third step is to draw a stylized base head structure while referring to your analysis. And by stylized, I mean in the proportions of the kind of face you usually draw for your characters. If you don't have one yet, I suggest studying the head proportions of an artist you admire and using that. Then, use that base structure to output into a character of your choice. This final step is very important to translate the real-life knowledge you gain from the analysis into a stylized form. In other words, it helps to activate the learning so you can actually use it when you're drawing characters. In this case, I focused on just outputting to a single character, Shiroko from Blue Archive, because I like her design and I also wanted to practice drawing animal ears from different angles. In terms of time investment, I would rate this a 1 to 2 stars as it depends on how many turnarounds you want to do. For experience points, I actually rate this a 3 stars as this tip was definitely the biggest game changer for me and the more turnarounds you do, the more you will learn. By the way, if you're enjoying this so far, I'd appreciate it if you could hit the like button as it really helps with the algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell as 67% of people watching aren't and it'd be awesome to see that number go down to 50. The third tip is to study anatomy. Even a basic understanding can make a big difference because the bones provide the structure for how the muscles attach and thus what the human figure actually looks like. And the head is no exception. And being completely honest, I was actually lazy to learn anatomy for the head because I initially thought like, bro, it's 2D. You're going to stylize it anyway, so is there any reason to learn the anatomy for the head? So I kind of put it off for like three years. And yes, I am face palming right now because that was how me earlier in my art journey thought. Like the moment I did anatomy studies of the head coupled with the other two tips, the world just opened for me and my head drawing leveled up by like 100 times. Because in the end, the anime style is a stylization of real life, so understanding how things work in real life will improve your ability to know what and how to stylize in a way that looks natural and believable. The way I did my studies was actually pretty simple. I just drew copies of the pictures from various books and resources, and then I would output what I had learned into a stylized version to make it applicable, like the previous tip. For example, when I was learning the structure of the eye, I would first study the anatomy and structure of it, and then follow that up with practice of stylized versions. As for the order of learning, I first started with the skull, then I moved on to the muscles and the structure of each facial features like the eyes, the ears, the nose, etc. I've gone through many books and resources on anatomy, but if I had to recommend just one, it would be this Anatomy for Sculptors book. The book is easy to understand as it uses visuals to explain everything. And out of all the books, I found it the best organized, making it simple to find the reference you need. I rate studying anatomy a 1-3 to three stars for the time investment as it depends on how deep you want to go. 
You can go for surface level basic understanding and just learn the general structure of the bones and muscles, or go all the way down the anatomy rabbit hole and learn all the little details. For the experience points received, I give this a 2.5 stars, as even though I feel anatomy studies are very useful, for anime style art, there is definitely a point of diminishing returns where studying more of it doesn't lead to much visible improvement for the time spent. However, that doesn't mean you should neglect it either. Personally, I feel a medium level of understanding is ideal, which is deeper than a basic understanding, but not as deep as a complete expert on the subject. And you can always do it in rounds, so you can do a round 1 for basic understanding, and then sometime later, you revisit and do a round 2 and go a bit deeper. So you might be wondering, what about 3D? 3D has come a long way, and many artists, myself included, use it in various parts of the workflow. So is any of this even necessary, now that 3D models are so good? For example, Clip Studio has its own 3D functions, and the recent 2.0 update now includes a head you can fully customize to make it look exactly the way you want. Using it as an underlay can both save you time and help you draw the head mark accurately. So is there any point in doing all this practice for the head or anatomy in general when we can just draw on top of a 3D model? In my opinion, 3D isn't a replacement for understanding. It's a tool to help you apply your understanding. The thing is, if you don't actually understand the structure of the face or the body to begin with, you end up over-relying on the 3D and you won't have the ability to know when you can follow it and when you should make adjustments. Because although powerful, it's not perfect, it's just a tool and you want to make sure that you are the master over the tool and not a slave to it. That's why I think that even if you use 3D, improving your understanding of what you are drawing is necessary and will ultimately allow you to draw better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, you might want to check out this hair drawing tutorial where I shared the 5 tips that completely changed the hair drawing game for me and allowed me to draw it at a pro level. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you can get notified whenever I make a new one. Also, if you want to see my art, make sure to check out my Twitter in the link below. This was Ori, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!